House Republicans appear more preoccupied with their effort to impeach President Biden, again, based on evidence that they still don't have, than funding the government before the September 30th deadline. The Freedom Caucus has vowed to oppose any continuing resolution to avoid a shutdown unless their laundry list of demands are catered to. And these are demands that will be dead on arrival in the Senate against, uh, amongst Democrats and, frankly, Republicans. They're even threatening to jeopardize McCarthy's speakership by invoking a motion to vacate the chair. Here's what Republican Congressman Matt Gates said on the House floor earlier this week. Mr. Speaker, you are out of compliance with the agreement that allowed you to assume this role. The path forward for the House of Representatives is to either bring you into immediate total compliance or remove you. Immediate total compliance. Whew. Well, NBC News reports that in a closed-door conference meeting, Speaker McCarthy challenged his detractors to, quote, file the effing motion, and he did not say effing. Once again, the speaker has demonstrated just a complete inability to get his house in order, and the Freedom Caucus is yet again using their leverage to put petty politics over the needs of everyday Americans and the stability of our government, might I add. The question is, will House Republicans come to their senses, or will they drive the economy over a cliff? Well, joining me now to discuss is Democratic Congresswoman and House Oversight Committee member Melanie Stansberry. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you. Okay, so I want to talk about this motion to vacate the chair. If it is brought, um, will Democrats join in? Well, I think it's obvious that we don't support Speaker McCarthy's speakership. I mean, he couldn't even get the votes in 15 rounds of votes to become the speaker in the first place, and we stand strongly behind Hakeem Jeffries to be the next speaker of the House. But, you know, I think the inability of the GOP to pass a budget, to even bring a rule to pass a budget to the floor, shows their complete lack of seriousness about governing, the political stunts that they're willing to pull and to tank the American economy in the process, and that they lack any appreciation and support for our basic democratic institutions. And, you know, I think it's noteworthy that Kevin McCarthy went out today and or this week and said he was willing to launch an impeachment with zero evidence in order to hold his speakership. I mean, it, to me, it seems like he did it to, um, you know, placate the Freedom Caucus. And then Matt Gates still went to the floor. Right. And, and that fiery clip was after mm -hmm. McCarthy announced the impeachment inquiry. So there's a lot of infighting amongst Republicans, particularly in the Republican conference in the House. I remember a time when all anybody in Washington would talk about was Democrats in disarray, but in the House, it seems, the Democrats are in one accord. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion amongst um, Democrats in the House to use this Republican infighting to their advantage, or are you all really just focused on the government funding fight? I think Democrats are unilaterally focused on governing. We are trying to get a budget across the finish line. We're trying to get a farm bill finished. We have federal aviation legislation we're trying to get done. And we understand the consequences of a government shutdown. In fact, the last time that a government shutdown happened, it cost the American people $11 billion. We're talking about millions of Americans that won't be getting a paycheck, putting a roof under, over their head, putting food on their table. So that's what Democrats are really focused on. But at the end of the the day, we know that a shutdown is not what the American people want. I just came back from six weeks in my district, traveling to my rural and tribal areas that I represent, and the American people, New Mexicans, are tired of this. They don't want to see this fighting. They want to see a government that represents them, that's going to fight for them, and that really wants to get something done. So it's really going to be to the political detriment, I think, of Republicans to continue down this path. You know, you talk about um, what folks in your district are talking about. I have to imagine that impeachment is not at the top of their list, yet uh, James Comer and, frankly, Speaker McCarthy, as we just discussed, are charging forward. You sit on the House Oversight Committee. We don't have time to play the sound, but the ranking member on the committee, Jamie Raskin, um, he he's very forceful about the strategy that you all have been employing. Talk to me a little bit about this strategy. I know you all have been having meetings. Um, and are you aware of any communication between Donald Trump and House Oversight Republicans? Well, I I think it's obvious if you look at the evidence, you know, you've got 
Comer and others, McCarthy going in front of TV cameras, really using this as a moment to defend Donald Trump. Their political candidate, their party leader, has 91 criminal charges against him. And here they are trying to trump up fake allegations after there's been extensive review of evidence and absolutely no evidence that there's even a reason to bring uh, an impeachment. And in fact, we know that McCarthy doesn't have the votes within his own party because Republicans who are serious about governing won't bring charges. So, uh, you know, clearly this is a political stunt. Clearly it's meant to provide cover for Donald Trump, who is their only hope. And uh, they're really trying to, you know, provide that political cover for him. All right. Congresswoman Melanie Stansberry, a preview of what I think we'll hear from Democrats on the House Oversight Committee. Thank you so much yep. for coming in today. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you.